R. Kelly, just keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it out loud. And maybe you will convince Hope. Because you won't be convincing anybody else, so dream on. I'm the librarian, and I came to read. R. Kelly, no matter how many times you say it, no matter how many times you repeat it, all right, just like Nene said, you won't be convincing Hope. You did convince me, and you couldn't even convince Gail, and she was sitting right there watching you act up. Let me tell you something. I'm going to let you sit in that corner for a moment. I'm going to come back to you, but first I want to talk about Game of Thrones. Now, when the trailer was released, a lot of y'all hopped onto Twitter and said, Adrian, you need to wake your ass up. Now, if you're not following me on Twitter, you need to, at Adrian Expression. Also on Instagram, y'all need to follow me on Instagram too. Adrian Expression, stop the video, follow me, and come back to it. But let me tell you, y'all say, wake your ass up, and it was worth the wait, okay? Because I was watching Game of Thrones release these damn selfies and, and promo pictures and shit. I was like, okay, this is really cute. Oh, this is really cute. Give me the damn trailer. And, you know, it, I am glad that they did what they had to do with that damn trailer, which means hopefully they'll do what they have to do with this goddamn season, okay? Ariel's spinning, Ariel's running around, and me and Justin and Gio and my friends, we were talking about like, okay, why is Ariel running like this when she's a badass assassin? Maybe she's trying to lead, lure somebody into a trap like she did when she was tumbling. You know, Scarlet took a tumble. <laughs> with them oranges and shit down them stairs. You remember that shit? And she let Miss Girl into the, this dark room and she cut the candle off like um, Georgia Power would be trying to cut your lights off and shit when you don't pay. And she went to work. So I'm just, I'm wondering if she's leading people into a trap. I seen Cersei running around here. It's hard to read her a little bit. It's hard to read her because on one hand, she's smiling. I think she's seen the Golden Company come in and she's like, well, girl, I got my army and let the, let the rest of these girls figure that shit out. But <laughs> I got my girls coming in. There have been theories running around saying that, you know, the Golden Company has been started by... It it definitely was started by a Targaryen, so it's like, what if the Golden Company, and they're known for not breaking their contract, so what if the Golden Company surprises everyone and breaks their contract to fight with Daenerys? Now, that would send Miss Cersei over the edge, especially if she loses her baby. The girls are wondering why she's over here chugging wine and shit, looking crazy. This, that's the same type of look she had when she blew up the set. I know what's going on. We have Varys running around here, looking like he about to, he's scared for his goddamn life. This is the first time we've really seen Varys actually concerned about some shit and we've seen every time he walked up to Miss Red Titties and she told him to tea like well I'll tell you what you've seen in the fire says you know okay we seen Jon Snow the, the auntie fucker yes man we seen Jon Snow and Daenerys walking up to these dragons girl can you can, I will get my life if we oh girl I just want to see hopefully by episode three Jon Snow say Dracarys on Rhaegar. He does not need to touch Drogon. That is Daenerys' baby. Thank you very much. Grey Worm and Masande are my faves. I'm telling you right now, if OnlyFans existed in Westeros, I would sign up so quick to watch they ass go at it. I promise you that I would! <laughs> oh my god, I cannot wait for this season. It comes out April 14th. I will be doing reviews. I have to do reviews at this point. I've been hyping this shit up so long. I'm gonna be doing reviews and we're gonna get into it. Them dragons were flapping their wings. You know what I mean? They were flapping. And Sansa said, girl, what's the motherfucking tea? You know what I mean? Sansa at this point, girl, it's okay. We understand that you Lady Winifred, you, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Girl, the dragons are coming. John and Danny look so goddamn good on them goddamn horses with the Sully. Not just that. Bitch, we're gonna get into it. So make sure, like, those of you who haven't caught up, make sure you catch up, because girl, I'm going to be doing these goddamn reviews, okay? <laughs> R. Kelly, I just wanted to let you know that I have a very special message from I Am Perez on Instagram, and this is what the good sis has to say. You're going to jail! Yes, I just want to make sure that is very clear to you. Now, before we get into it, I just want to let y'all know that they've been memeing the hell out of this whole interview, okay? Because, for example, this is me when I'm out for a night of drinks and a bill comes out of my account unexpectedly. I'm fighting for my life. This is me when I have my titties and belly button out um, in Atlanta and it's 30 something degrees. I'm fighting for my life. This was me in middle school when somebody asked me if I was gay. Y'all quit playing. Quit playing. This is not me. I said this on Twitter, but this is me when all the pending transactions hit at the same time. Y'all killing me with this this is me when I already paid the bill, but then I forgot to cancel the automatic payment, so I pay it twice. I'm fighting for my life. <laughs> I don't know who he thinks he's fooling, okay? I can already tell that his publicists are bad because they would not have... If, if you had a good publicist, they would tell you to sit your ass down. Just like if you had good lawyers, they would tell you, girl, don't do this goddamn interview. You got up there, and all Gail had to do was say, hey, sis, did you do it? Here you come. Are y'all trying to kill me? I gave you 30 years of my Robert. Like, girl, like... <laughs> 
you gave yourself away talking about, oh, why would I lock these girls up? And then you went into detail and only let them out when they need a pair of shoes from their uncle. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> You giving us all type of detail that we didn't even know that we just... Girl, sit your ass down! <laughs> Who does he think that he is... Look, girl, and then he gonna use this um, logic like, well, oh, I already beat the cases from, was it 2008 or some shit, 2009? I already beat the cases, so y'all, y'all trying to put me up again. It's, it'll be some double jeopardy type shit, girl. First of all, they're not trying you for the same shit. It's some new shit coming out, girl. <laughs> like, it's a, like we're actually, people are actually starting to pay attention. Now that your money is running out, you can't keep people silent anymore. Your power has been, it's being evaporated like Cersei's power is going to be taken from her ass. Just like that prophecy said, girl. You want to see that prophecy? There was a witch named Maggie who told Cersei like, yes sis, you're going to be the queen until there comes another younger and more beautiful to cast you down and take all that you hold dear. <laughs> And when your tears have drowned you, the Valonqar shall wrap his hands about your pale white throat and choke the life from you. Girl, R. Kelly, you thought that you were on some Cersei level type shit. You thought that you were going to be queen forever, girl. You know what I mean? Stuck queen forever and sit on up, you know, I don't want to call it iron. I want to say aluminum throne. Aluminum foil throne. Not the iron throne, but the aluminum foil throne. You, call, you thought you could sit there. You thought you could have your throne forever, but girl, the Valonqar is coming to wrap his, to wrap his fucking hands around your throat and choke the life from you, girl. After the queen, the queen, the younger, more beautiful queen that it's gonna take everything from you, girl. That's called the justice system. Finally working in a way that makes sense for so many of the survivors that have to have, that have to deal with your bullshit for decades, girl. While we're over here memeing and laughing about R. Kelly, which is fun to do, we should make sure that we give platforms to make sure we continue to give platform to these survivors who are out here fucked up and will continue to be fucked up and will continue to experience trauma publicly have to be reliving their fucking stories. While we're laughing at R. Kelly's ass, we should be making sure to keep these survivors as the priority because this is preposterous. This just should have happened a long ass time ago, girl. We got video evidence. Girl, stories are lining up. Get his ass out of here. Now, let me tell you something. Gail, Gail knew that this interview would be legendary, like one for the history books before she, before it was even released. She knew that all she had to do was let him show who he really was to all of the cameras. Is this camera on me? Is this camera on me? Yes, it's on. That's stupid. And all he do is make himself look worse, especially when trying to be all intimidating and towering over a woman. It's just, you're showing exactly who you are, girl, <laughs> and you're not helping your case. I mean, it's a done deal, but you really weren't helping it here. Miss Gail, you did what you had to do. <laughs> Miss Gail sat her ass down there and was just like, girl, I'll wait. Like a, like a good old substitute teacher, like, sis, you, you freaking out and shit. All I asked is, girl, what's the, t and, and she was very direct with what she was saying. She was like, you're playing the victim right now. And that shit set him off like that. <laughs> he did not like to hear that. Gail said, do you expect me to sit here and believe? that all of these women are lying. Do you really want me to believe? He's like, yes, girl. Y'all, they're trying to kill me out here. I was just like, R. Kelly. He's trying to play some mind games on our asses and it's not really working. You got caught for this shit back whenever in 2008 and you got to quit it. And you continue to dabble in the same bullshit. You continue to be as abusive as you were. But now you're trying to lie to us and say, oh, well, girl, why would I do that? I would be stupid to do it. Yeah, you would be, which is why you're sitting there today, girl, because you did it, girl. <laughs> Take him out of here. I don't want to see his ass no more. This was his final last stretch to try and get the public on his side and it's, it did not work. It's not working anymore. He sees what is coming. He sees what's coming and it is scaring the living shit out of him and that's exactly what we saw in that interview. We see we see him freaking out. We see him trying to gaslight us. But girl, we see through it now, okay? Like Nicki Minaj, you see right through me, baby. Uh, we're seeing right through the bullshit. R. Kelly, the, the time has come for you to lip sync for your life and it looks like this it looks like that your ass is about to sashay the fuck away girl you try and then he interestingly tried to put the blame on the parents it's just like sis i thought you didn't do this shit but you're saying now that oh well why would the parents give them to me why would they do it it's their responsibility only when i stop paying them do they want to say something i'm just like okay and it reminds me of so many narcissists who just like well girl they're the reason why i'm fucked up they're the reason that's the reason why i'm fucked up it's like no girl you can't even accept responsibility for the bullshit that your ass has done and that's why we're gonna Send that nigga to jail. That.
way. All right, so let's talk about some good news. Apparently, Rock Nation has been really doing the damn thing when it comes to trying to help out black people who have been stuck in ridiculous legal situations like Jabari, who was a sixth grade boy who was arrested last month after refusing to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. They got all the charges dismissed against him. I'm very happy about that. They, ha they were also active with I don't know if it was Meek Mill and also 21 Savage when that shit was going on. So Rock Nation tapped this lawyer, Alex Spiro or Spiro or whatever, and he agreed to do the case pro bono. And I'm reading from Complex, the lawyer said Jabari is a courageous and intelligent young man who deserves all the credit for standing up for his beliefs. Um, he should have never been arrested or entangled in this situation. His freedom of speech rights were clearly protected under the First Amendment. Jabari's mother also said that she's so grateful for all the entertainers and everybody at Rock Nation who helped them out. She said, although Jabari's case has been dismissed, I do want people to know this isn't just about my son. This prejudice happens to African-American kids all across the country. The fight isn't over, which is why I have a civil rights complaint pending with the U.S. Department of Education. At the end of the day, I want to ensure that no child has to ever experience this injustice again, and we will appreciate everyone's continued support. So I thought that was really cool that Rock Nation's out here doing the damn thing. I was just like, oh my God. I remember reading that story and just like, it just really crazy the amount of um, state violence that black and brown kids are subjected to. And it's something that their white counterparts don't even have to think about. So I will end this video talking about the Wicked Witch of the Border, Secretary Nielsen, Long Nose Nielsen, Fishing Pier, Built Nose, Built Ass Nielsen. She's testifying before the House Homeland Security Committee about this whole human rights catastrophe that's going on at the border. She got dragged so many times in so many different ways. No matter how many times she tried to deflect from the questions that have been asked of her, it showed her mind boggling incompetence and her lack of compassion. One of the people who dragged the shit out of her was Lauren Underwood and she is a nurse and she's also the youngest black woman ever elected to Congress. I think she's from Illinois, I think. And she asked Nielsen these questions. Uh, when you officially began family separation in spring 2018, were you aware of research showing it causes trauma that can do most immediate and long-term damage to children's health? Uh, the information that I was aware of at the time was that the trauma is for part of the journey uh, to come up to the border illegally. Okay, so again, we're looking for yes or no answers, ma'am. That was a, what, what I do know within the context of the question. Okay, and were you aware that the trauma of family separation is connected to something called toxic stress? I have, I'm not familiar with that term, no. Okay, were you aware that toxic stress can actually change a child's brain because it's still developing? I wasn't familiar with the term. Okay, were you aware that the effects of these traumas are cumulative, that they get worse the longer the trauma goes on? I, can I, yes, I'll, sorry. I'd like to clarify because we're missing- And of course she's dancing around the point. They didn't care about these kids, which is what Lauren is making sure that uh, Nielsen displays. She didn't care about these kids. They didn't consider research. They didn't care about the fucking research that these kids would be traumatized and, you know, for life. And they did it anyway. Congresswoman Bonnie Coleman for New Jersey asked Secretary Nielsen, what is a chain link fence enclosed into a chamber on a concrete floor? A cage? And this is what, this is the exchange. Is that a cage? It's a detention space, ma'am, that you know has existed for decades. Does it differ from the cages you put your dogs in when you let them stay outside, is it, a, is it different? It, it, yes. In what sense? Uh, it's larger, it has facilities, uh, it provides room to sit, to stand, to lay down. So did my dog's cage. So at this point, they're not even trying to hide that they don't see immigrants or immigrant children. And it's just, <laughs> if you don't see children as, as human beings and you, you just treat them like dogs, it's really no hope for your ass. Like, there's no hope for you. You don't have any type of empathy. Y'all hoes are racist as hell. Um, and you will continue to destroy the lives of these people even if they're fucking seeking asylum. And half the time they're seeking asylum because the United States does not know how to mind its own goddamn business and continues to disrupt governments around the goddamn world. So it's just, <laughs> I'm so sick and tired, but I'm glad that Nielsen's getting her ass dragged. I'm hoping that this and the House Democrats will continue to uncover the inhumane practices that are going on and get these hoes out of here. Get them out of here. With that being said, I'd like to give a short musical rendition that reflects R. Kelly's future. <clears throat> I don't see nothing wrong with a little prison time. And I hope that all of the survivors in his case 
can have a good goddamn evening.